Matthew 26, starting from 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? Could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, the second time he went away and prayed, O oh my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them as sleeping again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again, and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Verse 47. And while he was still speaking, behold, Jesus, one of the twelve, with a great multitude with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now his betrayer had given them a sign, saying, Whoever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him. Immediately he went up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. But Jesus said to him, Friend, what have you, why have you come? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And suddenly one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest, and cut off his ear. But Jesus said to him, Put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father, and he will provide me with more than twelve legions of angels? How then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must happen thus? In that hour, Jesus said to the multitudes, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to take me? I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and you didn't seize me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled, that all the disciples forsook him and left. As we're able to see, this particular passage is talking about Jesus is about to be crucified. And he's depending on his three closest um, friends to support him and encourage him and support him up because he knew and felt that he's about to go into a hard time. Today's Bible passage is a study in contrast between Jesus and his disciples and how well they obeyed. God wants more from them. God wanted more from them that they wanted to give. Jesus was aware that he was about to be portrayed at the hand of Judas an event that would ultimately lead to his death on the cross and his experiencing separation from his heavenly father. The latter consequence was infinitely more severe than the first. From eternity, Jesus was a member of the Trinity and experienced a perfect and intimate relationship with the Father and Holy Spirit. This closeness would be broken when Jesus bore the sins of the whole world. When Jesus hung on the cross, he responded to this alienation by asking, why has God forsaken him? Before then, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus bore the anxiety that came with anticipating his fate. He asked Peter, James, and John to join him in prayer as he asked God for the strength to obey. In his time of prayer, Jesus wasn't shrinking from his death. Instead, he suffered knowing that he alone would bear God's anger that the world earned due to its sinfulness. Jesus asked God to take this burden from him, but he qualified his request by adding that he would surrender to God, God's will instead of his own. Amen. So 
So we're able to see through this passage how to respond when God calls us to do something that we might not want to do. And we just read it in Matthew 26, 36 to 55. And this gospel stressed how throughout this gospel, Matthew, Jesus carefully fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies about him in order to break the power of sin. But also in this passage, the price of obeying his father in order to accomplish salvation was obviously a high price. And we're able to see that. So throughout the Bible, the number three signifies completeness. So Jesus wrestled with God in prayer three times and completely surrendered to God. The disciples surrendered to sleep three times and were completely unprepared to resist the temptation to resist arrest through violence. Amen. So what difference does it make whether the disciple whether the whether the disciples were asleep or not, given that Jesus was going to be crucified no matter what? What difference does it make that the disciples were sleeping or awake? It's for their own good. Okay. How? So that they will not come into temptation, will not submit or give in to temptation. Okay. What difference does it make whether the disciples were asleep if we knew that regardless of what was happening, if Jesus was going to die, what difference does it make if the disciples were sleeping? Jesus called them and said, come with me and pray with me. And they tried. It was hard for them. They tried their best. And they, they weren't able to. But did it really make a difference? For them to be with Jesus? After all, he was, he, was, he was God in the flesh. So, did it really make a difference if the disciples were asleep or awake? It was um, it's for their own good still. Like, it wasn't going to happen regardless of what they do, but it's for them to prepare themselves for what's coming ahead. Watch and pray that we fall into temptation. It was for them to prepare themselves for what's coming ahead. Yeah, and then of course they wouldn't have seen what was going to happen, right? Because this immediately the swords came, but the guys came yeah. in and took Jesus. So yes, I agree with that. It was for the disciples. It was for them to learn to be able to yes, hold Jesus up. Um, but at the same time, um, from the time that Jesus was you know dead and crucified and God, and also Jesus ascended to heaven, they also too. Um, continue to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. And the things that the disciples went through, as we read about in the New Testament, um, they suffered too. So it was also for them as well. Anybody else? So Jesus chose three close friends to take with him to prayer. He pulled them aside and said that my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. It's interesting that even Jesus needed close friends. Even Jesus needed people around him at his hardest moment. Especially at this time where the grief was so intense. This reminds us of how important it is for us to have friends who can come alongside us in difficult times. Mm -hmm. And it's likely that many of us you know, struggle in certain areas, with certain situations. And even though we might not have been crushed with grief like Jesus was, we still need friends to help support us at times, whether it's praying or talking or etc. So we understand the importance of being obedient to the Lord, as we just read in the scripture. Even though sometimes we may not want to be, and that's the truth, but we need to remember that intending to obey God when it's hard isn't the same as actually being obedient or doing what God says. For example, and this has happened to me, I'll come home from work and I'm really tired and I'm like, okay, I want to sleep. And God's calling me to prayer and I have a choice. I, I do. And I can choose to say, you know what, word later. <laughs> Let me just catch myself for a minute. Or I could say, okay, you know what, God wants me to pray. Uh, you know, who wants me to pray? So let me get up. And there are times where I said, you know, Lord, just give me, give me a couple minutes. 
Um, and there are times when where I jumped up and said, sure. And I've had to step up to play and say, no matter what time. And there's times when where, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm beat. I'm tired. True. I, I yeah. need sleep. And God is calling me yeah. to, to talk with him. And, and, and I find that those are the interesting moments. In where you're, you have no energy, and God's calling you, and then the, those those are the times in where He shows you or He speaks to you. I'm not saying any other time, but um, those are the times in where He really like pours stuff into you. You're like, wow, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm glad that I speak because <laughs> yeah. I want to see this. If, if, if I said no, you know what I mean. So um, I've I've had to learn to really understand that intending to obey and saying, okay. Yeah, I'll obey, but later time, and and, and, and say, okay, you no know, more. Yes, it's three a.m. Okay, yes, I just I just got. Oh, okay, you're calling the prayer, or I I could I could just be busy doing something. God says, no, I want you to come and spend some time with me, and to be able to leave stuff aside and say, okay, that I'm gonna do that. So in this passage. In the passage preceding the one we just read, Peter argues with Jesus and says that he would remain faithful to Jesus, even though Jesus says that he would betray him three times. And if we were to read ahead, we would see that Peter obviously doesn't obey Jesus any better than the other disciples. This is to show us that we all have areas in our lives that it might be easy to follow Jesus. And then there are other times where it's not. Mm-hmm. Some of us can talk about um, where God, we can testify, we can reach people, we can say, uh, we can talk about our faith in God easily and with other people. It might not. We all have strengths and weaknesses in different areas. But we also have areas in our life from where we don't want to make God, and we should. And I just talked about it, a prompting from God to pray or to do something else or to talk, you know, give this person over your $5. Um, or, you know, to give this person something else, or we're thinking, you know, and he knows God too. You, you know. <laughs> you, you know. I mean, some, and sometimes you use that, okay, well, you know, God is just really you, and, you know, stuff that, no, he, he knows when he goes talking to you. To do something specific, but for whatever reason, we don't want to take the risk. For whatever purpose, whether it's fear, whether we don't know what the reaction of the other person is going to be. Uh, sometimes we just don't know what. It's going to 